What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here, and in this video I'm going to be detailing some exotic armor pieces that are really going to shine in Season of the Wish. I have some super awesome builds in mind, but I probably won't get those out for like a month as I like to run most of my builds through GM so I can get a taste of how strong they really are. But Master Lost Sectors and Nightfalls can also be a decent indicator of build strength, so maybe I will get a couple out sooner than later. Also, this video is more designed to focus on solar and stasis specific exotics, or underused or recently reworked exotics. So by all means, Lucky Pants or Sertorachne's Facade Hunter is still going to be great, as well Syntheseps Titan despite what people are crying about online. Lastly, there will be a decent amount of self promo because I do have build videos already for a number of these exotics, so those can go more in depth on the build if you want to get some builds ready for yourself before next season starts. With all that being said, let's dive into the armor pieces you are going to want to try out in the upcoming season. We will go class by class in alphabetical order, so that means first up, we have Hunters. Shards of Galinor were meta back in Forsaken, but it has not been at the top of the meta since Bungie did a balance pass back in the days of like Season of the Drifter when super regen exotics like It and Skull of Dyrahamkara got smacked after the Reckoning shenanigans. And now, all these years later, Bungie is finally buffing it again. Throwing Knife Kills will now grant super energy ranging between 2.5 and 5%. Pair this with Hands On on the helmet, and this exotic may have insane super uptime. That being said, I think it will be outshone by Star Eater Scales which also give high super uptime, but also allow Blade Barrage to be one of the highest damage supers in the game. And on top of that, it will be even stronger next season thanks to the artifact mod Heart of the Flame where casting your solar super grants nearby allies radiant and increases the damage of your super for each nearby ally. And we don't yet know how powerful the buff to super damage will be, but safe to say, both exotics will benefit greatly from this artifact mod. Speaking of exotics that will benefit from that mod, we have Celestial Nighthawk. This has long been one of my favorite exotics because I love high single shot damage weapons. There's something so satisfying about just deleting high health targets with things like 4th Horseman, Izanagi's Burden, or Parasite. That being said, Celestial has felt weak for a long time now and I have been waiting for a buff. Sadly, we don't have a damage buff here, but Bungie is instead giving us more super uptime. We now get more super energy for precision kills. So while I think it still needs to deal more damage, we will benefit from Solar Surge a lot next season as well as Heart of the Flame when we are in a team setting. So I will definitely be having some fun with this exotic in Season of the Wish. Speaking of strong helmets, Foetracer goes hard with Strand and Solar, but I'm also excited to try it out with Stasis and some Stasis weapons next season. So don't sleep on this exotic. Mask of Bacchus can also benefit your Stasis weapons, though it also benefits Arc, and that isn't in the seasonal loop at all next season. Renewal Grasps are gloves that enhance your Duskfield grenades even further and has some nice synergy with some of the artifact mods next season. It also gives damage reduction, so it is quite good and high in content for survivability. Caliban's Hand is fun for Scorch and Ignitions, but the next option will do everything Caliban's does but way better. This is my ultimate meta sleeper pick for the next season, and that is Atherus's Embrace. This strengthens your heavy knife, allowing it to deal more damage, and it also stuns unstoppables. It also gives you 50 plus strength whenever the buff is active. And then Ember of Torches will allow you to proc Radiant from your knife and then knife kills will recharge your melee ability thanks to knock them down. So this all sounds great and strong, right? But next season, it will be able to cause ignitions pretty much all the time. Why is that? Well, weighted throwing knife kills on scorched enemies ignite the enemy. So normally, you could only do this with something like Skyburner's Oath because it can apply scorch at base, or incandescent weapons if you're lucky. But next season, we have an artifact perk called Kindling Trigger. Radiant causes solar weapons to apply Scorch to unscorched combatants. So any solar weapon will be able to apply Scorch as long as you are Radiant. And it is super easy to get Radiant thanks to Flint Striker or just your throwing knife and Ember of Torches. So now you just have to shoot an enemy with a solar weapon, it becomes Scorched, and then you throw your knife and boom, explosion. And the throwing knife with Athrus's Embrace has insane tracking, so you don't even have to be that accurate. This build is going to go crazy next season. Anyways, that was a really long and detailed explanation, but I did want to detail it so you can be prepared for the chaos and understand how this build works. I will definitely be making a build video on it and taking it through some solo GMs. Anyways, let's keep the list going. Everything I just mentioned, Ophidia Spathe can also do, and it is getting buffed next season. 
I have long been a fan of this exotic and I recently made a build video showing how awesome it is, so check that out after this video. That build will be even better next season thanks to the recent rework. Now we have a couple class neutral exotics that I'm excited about, with the first being Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves. It is getting buffed and making the exotic perk much more forgiving to use and the damage buff can be extended. This is great, especially because Anti-Barrier Sidearm is the only AB option next season, so I'm excited to mess around with these. And lastly, with all the Glaive reworks coming next season, I am curious as to how the Triton Vice Arms will perform. They got a buff too, so they could feel pretty decent. Okay, so I got a little in depth on the Hunter there, now let's move on to the Titan. First up is Ashen Wake, which is getting a small buff. Our fusion grenades can now stun unstoppables. Again, Solar is heavily featured next season, so this build could be pretty fun. And I even soloed a GM with it recently, so it is no slouch. It has great ability uptime, which is sort of generally being nerfed next season, so definitely give this one a go. Hollowfire Heart used to be one of my favorite exotics in the game, so maybe next season it will have some room to shine. It is a great pick for Solar Titan, especially since Synthos and Heart of Inmost Light aren't quite so dominant anymore. Kepri's Horn is a bit of a meme, but it could be fun to mess around with and make a build work. Lordly Splendor is a safe option for Solar Titans, and Pyrogel Gauntlets have a pretty cool premise. Again though, it has been so hard to take off Synthos because they are just better than everything else, but with the recent nerf, maybe Pyrogels can have some room to breathe now. Path of Burning Steps used to be one of my favorite exotics thanks to how much you could stack damage before the changes in Lightfall. That being said, this season has a heavy emphasis on solar weapon usage, so I would definitely take a look at these. And Phoenix Cradles are also a nice option for Sunbreaker Titans, and that'll round out the solar based exotics for Titan. Next, let's look at the Stasis ones. First up is Cadmus Ridge Lance Cap. There are some artifact mods that will make shattering stasis crystals more effective, and this build is amazing at making tons of crystals, so this one could definitely be fun to mess around with. Warfrost Z can make tons of stasis crystals on demand and allow for big stasis ability spam, so it too could be really strong. Icefall Mantle is kind of annoying thanks to the slow to your movement, but it does give easy stasis weapon buffs. That being said, I do think solar weapons will be on top next season, but it's still a good option to consider. And that is it for the stasis specific exotics. Now for a couple that are being buffed. First is Severance Enclosure. This thing was dead on arrival and has sucked ass ever since. But Bungie is giving it a couple buffs. It is increasing the size and damage of the explosion and allowing explosion kills to trigger a second explosion. I really hope this is a substantial buff because like I said, for its entire existence it has been trash. So here's hoping. Onto another exotic that I hope is buffed substantially, we have Peregrine Greaves. This used to work with 1-2 punch and it was so much fun. But since that got patched, it hasn't seen much use at all. But now it will get melee energy back when you damage a champion, tormentor, or mini boss, And it will deal increased damage. We don't yet know how much damage, but I hope it is smoking GM champions. That would be fun. Time will tell. That being said, it is best with a Void subclass thanks to Offensive Bulwark doubling your damage, so I am not sure how good it will be on a Solar subclass, but I'm excited to try it out nonetheless. And lastly we have Worm God Caress. These are getting a rework and look to be more forgiving than they were in the past. This one all depends on how substantial the melee and weapon damage increases are, but I'm excited to play around with them. So we have some pretty fun options for the Titans and Hunters next season, and that leaves us with the Warlock. They don't have much in the way of hidden gem exotics, but I will highlight some ones that will surely shine. First up is Sunbracers. Not exactly off meta, but I did just recently do a video on these showcasing how good they will be next season, so check that out after this video. These gloves have been awesome for a long time now and will continue to be great next season, especially thanks to the artifact mod Revitalizing Blast which will allow solar abilities to weaken bosses and champions. So this exotic is about to go crazy. There is also the artifact mod from Whence You Came, where Scorn and Taken take increased ability damage, so it will pair nicely in content with those enemies. Another debuff style mod is Torch. While Radiant, deal increased damage to combatants affected by Strand and Stasis debuffs. And there is no better exotic in the game at applying Stasis debuffs than Osmiomancies. This gives you two Cold Snap grenades, and you can chuck a ton of Bleak Watcher turrets with them to keep the whole battlefield slowed or frozen. And you may be saying, but Tizzle, you can't get Radiant on Stasis. 
Well, I think you can if you run solar weapons thanks to Flint Striker, where rapid solar weapon precision hits or kills grant radiant. So run Osmiomancies with solar weapons and you'll be cranking out the damage. I am pumped to try this setup out. If Strand is what you want to go with, then the Swarmers are always a great option to run. And that is pretty much it for the Warlock meta for next season. See you next time. But in all seriousness, I have some other Warlock options that could be pretty fun. The only rework I am curious about is Balador's Wrath Weavers, which gives your teammates tier 2 Stasis Surge when you cast a Frost Pulse Rift. And now you will always get tier 4 Stasis Surge when you come out of your super, which used to just be a timing issue bug, but now it's a feature. But these could have a big play in PvP, especially Trials. I'm not going to go too deep into it here, but yeah, these could be nasty in certain team builds for Trials. As for PvE, I still think I would take Osmiomancies over these, as the neutral game of Stasis Lock is far better than the super, especially in high-end content. I love Dawn Chorus, as you may know if you're a fan of the channel, and next season with Heart of the Flame, that super could go crazy. It also has really good neutral game and will benefit from the Kindling Trigger artifact mod more than any other exotic. Apotheosis Veil is getting a rework and I am curious to see the increase to abilities. It will have to be like Sunbracer spam at minimum for anyone to even look at it. Mantle of Battle Harmony has always been a fun exotic, and next season it could be really good thanks to the emphasis on using solar weapons, so don't sleep on it. Necrotic Grip is always great, and with Thorn getting a catalyst, don't sleep on that build at all. Osteostriga is getting a much needed nerf, so that combo is primed to go hard. Plus, we have Unstoppable Hand Cannon on the artifact. Phoenix Protocol is basically capable of chaining wells in high add density GMs, so it's always a decent option, and Starfire Protocol will be really strong thanks to Revitalizing Blast. I know it was nerfed, but it is still a very strong exotic. It's just no longer busted. Wings of Sacred Dawn is another solar based exotic that is surprisingly good with the right build. I made a build video on this at the start of last season and it performed very poorly. But trust me, the build is very strong and very good, so you should check it out. And lastly, we have the exotic that is pretty much broken if at least two people are running it, and that is Verity's Brow. This exotic is insane in team play and you can be chucking grenades constantly with it. And with a revitalizing blast, it is only going to go more crazy next season. So definitely get a Verity's build made if you don't have one already. Again, I have a build video on my channel if you want a more in-depth breakdown. And that will conclude the video. 35 exotics total to watch out for, 11 for Hunter and Warlock, and 13 for Titan. Let me know down in the comments what exotics you are most excited to use next season. For me, it is definitely Athras' Embrace more than anything else. But I do hope Celestial Nighthawk also feels good. If you are still watching, then thanks so much for watching to the end, I really do appreciate it. Do me a favor and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe if you want to see more awesome Destiny content from me in the future. We are just a couple days away from Season of the Wish now, and I'm getting quite excited. Happy build crafting, and take care.